Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I've got a simple video for you today and what we're going to be attempting to do is resurface, resurfacing the bottom of both of these small block Chevy polished aluminum valve covers. Now these are going to be for the upcoming motor build that I do for my square body truck. The problem with these budget valve covers is not that they're not rigid and nice and plenty, plenty fine. The problem is that they're not flat. Not flat at all. You set these on the surface plate and they're more like a rocking chair than an actual ceiling surface. In fact, I would bet money that they've been surfaced on a belt sander. So let me show you these surfaces. We'll get set up in the shaper. It's been a while since I've used this thing, and I think it'll be fun to clean these up to make them to where they'll actually do what they're supposed to do, and that is hold oil inside the engine. So a little closer look at the valve cover here. These were all TIG welded by hand. I can tell by the, by the weld pattern on them, and whoever welded these done a good job. I'm sure it was over in some other country. Just a budget valve cover. Not bad, to be honest. The main issue with these that I see is that the sealant surface is just not good. They just tried to surface it with a belt sander. I can tell by the long you know, scratch marks on it, plus that belt that they were using was obviously caked full of aluminum, and we just got a lot of smearing and just not good and not flat. So the cost of a cheap valve cover is poor sealing. So what we can do, though, is set these up in the shaper clean up these mating surfaces and this should be a nice set of valve covers. really do like the design. I think it looks good, especially after a you know, heavy polish. So obviously the fastest way to resurface these valve covers would be to put them in the milling machine with a face mill, you know, and you'd be pretty much done. The reason why I'm using the shaper is just because I want to. And these are 20 inches long. My shaper is a 24 inch shaper, so it'll have no problem knocking these out in one go. And I think I'll get a very good job using this machine. It's always gave me great results. So I am going to get a few pieces together. We'll set these in the vise and get them squared away. And then we'll fire this thing up and, and start cutting on these. So I don't necessarily want it sitting on the bottom because I don't care if the top of this valve cover is parallel with the bottom. All that I care is that I take an even amount as even as I can off of the whole flange face of this. That way I don't have one side super thick and then one side that's paper thin. So I'm gonna to have to mess with this with a, for a minute in order to achieve that. Also, I'm not gonna clamp this thing hard in the vise. You know, I could put a block of wood or something in here, but it's not gonna take hardly anything to hold this in place. And the harder I clamp this, the more I move stuff and the less flat it'll be when I'm done. So just enough to hold it is enough. So I'm going to get an indicator put in here, check this, and then we'll get started cutting. So after running this shaper for years, I found that the little Starrett 196 indicator set, it really fits it well. A little bottom plunger indicator, all the kit that you would use, you know, to get set up in the tool post to indicate in a job like this. So if you have a shaper, and if you can find one of these kits, I find that they're really handy. And they got most everything in it that you need. You can clamp this in your tool post if you don't have a tool in there. You can clamp a, uh, clamp a rod to it, or if you've got a cutter in the box or in the tool post, you can just you know, use this little vise attachment and hook that to your cutter. That way, you don't have to remove it in order to use the ram to dial in something like this. So, a really nice little set.
So there's a look at the cutter that we're going to be using. Quite a bit of rake. Pretty large nose radius. Well, you can see that. It's got quite a bit of relief in it. It's been used, so I'm just going to touch it up on the stone here. And hopefully this will give us a really nice smooth finish on those uh, valve cover ceiling surfaces. So a little Coleman lantern fluid is all it is. White gas. What I call it. I'm just going to drag this cutting edge across this stone. Trying to make as smooth the moves as possible. You shouldn't expect to get any better finish on the part that you're cutting than what you put on the cutting edge of the tool. Because it's going to directly in part whatever finish you have on that cutting edge onto the part you're cutting. So we're going to try to polish this thing up real nice and hopefully you know, our efforts will pay off in a nice finish. is done anyway. So now I'm just going to finish it up with a hard Arkansas, which is a really smooth finished stone, really extremely non-aggressive. Are you staying warm over there? cleaned his mess up this morning and we'll clean it up again mm -hmm. I'm resurfacing the bottoms of these valve covers okay. the bottoms of these valve covers were just not flat they I don't, I don't know if I'd call them bad but they weren't weren't very good yeah. they could be better Right? Valve covers are notorious for leaking. There's only four bolts that hold these things down. So if we can make a nice even sealing surface, hopefully that will minimize the leaks. Just touching on both ends just ever so lightly. So I'll make a couple passes over this thing and then can show you more when we get into into the cut. So there's our first pass. Really, we only touched there and right there. So still a long way to go. Now I'm gonna bump this up to about 30 thousandths per, per stroke on the step over and then 15 thousandths step to the cut. I don't wanna push it too much because we, we're not held too great here. You know, obviously, we're gonna be cutting a lot of air, but that's just the way it is when you're know, working with one of these machines.
so this is my final cut. This is just a five thousandths of an inch deep, ten thousandths of an inch step over, just for a good finish. Just final pass. Got a little low spot there, and that is it. And it looks like it's cleaning up. So there we go, both valve covers done, just knocking the sharp edges off of them with a small file. I think the most I had to take off to get these flat was uh, 60,000, so they really weren't all that bad, although they felt horrible on the flat surface or setting them on the top of the cylinder head. They just rocked like crazy. And if you look at how big the gasket surface is on these and how few bolts, there's only four that hold this down, you know, you're asking quite a bit from those you know, to seal up. So hopefully that will help and these won't leak, but you know, only, only time will tell. But there you go. Glad I got to use the shaper. Hadn't actually used it in probably about two weeks. So, you know, that was a lot of fun and it, no time wasted, even though there's a lot of air cutting in a job like this, you know, I'm off doing other things, keeping this, you know, keep an eye on this from the background while I'm accomplishing other things. So just a little job that I wanted to knock out and a quick video I thought I'd share with you guys. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born. Just a flower on your own Waiting for the sun to blow